Welcome to EMC DV Design and Validation. Today I would like to tell you about conducted emission disturbance voltage test that almost any electronic device needs to pass to achieve EMC certification. In part 1 I will talk about the theory behind why we need to pass conducted emission and how. In part 2 I will talk more about how to design and estimate an EMC filter by simulation in LTSpice. Let us start and have a successful day with EMC. After watching this video, you will know where to find a conducted emission EMC test diagram, how to think about results, so forward thinking. Before we know how to do this test, we will see the results, what we want to achieve. Then we will see example of a device and noise path where noise is getting out from our device to the working environment. Then overview of the standards, two type of test setups and couple points how to reduce noise in our device. We'll use some acronyms DUT device under test that is your device, CE contacted emission, EMC electromagnetic compatibility, CM for common mode and DM for differential mode. Common mode and differential mode is about noise, so your results consist of two types of nodes, common mode and differential mode. This is a typical EMC test diagram that you will see in other materials. So electromagnetic compatibility tests are divided to emission and immunity. For emission, we have radiated emission and conducted emission. And for immunity, we have radiated immunity, conducted immunity, and ESD, electrostatic discharge. So, where is conducted emission in the EMC test diagram? It's type of the test emission and conducted. And here we'll be having a couple tests. One of these tests is voltage disturbances, and we have Standard associated with this test EN5011 is for medical equipment, laboratory equipment and industrial equipment. EN5012 is for automotive emission offboard receivers. Uh, EN5025 is automotive onboard receivers. EN5014-1 is emission for household appliances. EN550515 is emission for lighting equipment, for example LED lamps, and EN550032 is for multimedia equipment. Results view forward thinking. What you want to achieve is lower noise than the limit specified in the EMC standards for your device. Noise is measured in dB microvolts versus frequency and is usually from 150 kilohertz to 30 megahertz. On the chart you have two types of envelope for the peak detector and the average detector flow which is usually used for narrow band emissions. The quasi peak limits will be always higher than the average limits. The algorithm of your measurement device will measure the value at peak and average and measure again at critical points for quasi-peak measurements. This is because the peak detector is much faster than the quasi-peak detector. The important thing is that the your disturbance voltage, your noise, consists of common mode noise plus minus differential mode noise. At lower frequencies, differential mode noise will dominate and at higher frequencies, common mode noise will dominate. It is very important to know which type of noise is over the limit at given frequencies because common mode and differential mode currents have different paths and methods of amplitude reduction. Noise path. We can see our duty device under test and our load. For example, a controller and a motor or a controller and a display. On the input power wires of the device, the common mode plus differential mode noise flow into mains. And here we need to have lower noise than specified limit lines and also we will have noise coming out of the signal wires. 
between the DUT and the load, you can see that differential mode noise flow our plus wire and return minus wire, but common mode noise flow both wires in the same direction and return through the capacitive coupling between the chassis of our devices and any components in between. Since our DUT have parasitic components, the noise will split and some of it will always come out of our device into mains or signal wires. Test setup example number one. This is an example of benchtop device testing. What is needed is a 2 by 2 meter metal wall as a low reference impedance for the common mode current return, usually made of stainless steel. And then listen, line impedance stabilization network from which the device must be fed. It will provide a well-defined RF impedance for the DUT device under test and keep away unwanted interference from the mains and from the device to the mains. Your measurement equipment will be a spectrum analyzer with a 50 ohm termination connected to the listen. The spectrum analyzer will measure the common mode plus minus differential mode noise and display it on a graph with the limit lines we saw earlier. An important part of the test step is maintaining the distances as they will make that test repeatable in any location. The, te the test setup number two is also an example of a bench top device testing, but with two metal walls, one in vertical position and second in horizontal position, and that is giving you an opportunity to put your LISIN or MIN artificial main network on the ground on the metal reference horizontal plane. And then you will have more space on your table to measure your device and auxiliary equipment. So how do you reduce the conducted emission disturbance voltage? In your DT, you may have a power path and a signal path. Then you will have a pair of SMPSs. For most devices, the biggest source of noise will be the SMPS, switch mode power supply, device that switches to increase, decrease or stabilize the output voltage. What do you need to have is the right schematic with the right component values and components placement because then the layouter will know which component should be closer to SMP S's inputs and also you need to have the right component parameters and perhaps most importantly you must have filters at the input and the output of your SMPS. Proper layout between SMPS and the power connector is also important and in the end you will need a filtering at the device connector. In the next part I will talk about EMC filter design by simulation in LTSpice. Subscribe to be notified of future parts. See you then.